Hey guys, Matteo here, welcome back to a new video. And today I wanna to talk about the difference between the Pocket 4K and the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. I wanna tell you why I think the Pocket 6K is a much better camera for a new filmmaker, for an up and coming filmmaker, if you're entering to the market of cameras in this moment. And I also wanna share with you why I don't think I will ever go back to Micro Four Third system, so MFT. But let's first start with the Pocket 6K versus Pocket 4K and why I think you should jump on the Pocket 6K. I don't think there's a crazy amount of difference to be honest. They're mainly three different. So sensor size, so on the Pocket 6K you finally have an S35 sensor even though the crop is a little bit too much. For example, in the Pocket 6K there's 1.56 crop. My Ursa Mini Pro, which is a, an S35, that's 1.3. It's also EF, where the Pocket 4K has a micro four-third sensor and it's an MFT mount. Another big difference between the 6K and the Pocket 4K is that the Pocket 4K is a little bit softer. The Pocket 6K is sharper, but in a very good way. It just looks more solid, in my opinion, compared to the Pocket 4K, which tend to be a little softer, especially if you use uh, vintage lenses or speed booster. Of course, we're talking about 4K versus 6K, but again, I can't see that difference between my Pocket 6K and the Ursa Mini Pro 12K when it comes to sharpness and resolution. They're pretty similar, even if one is 6K and the other one is 12K. So there is something more, and I think it's just something that has to do with the S35 sensor. Moving forward with the difference between the 6K and the 4K, it's also about skin tone. So on the Pocket 4K, the skin tones are a little bit brownish, a little bit brown, they have this brown tint to it. I don't know what it is maybe just a little bit more red. They're beautiful, don't get me wrong. It was an amazing camera when it came out and it's still amazing, but I really think the skin tones are really, really improved in the Pocket 6K. I really like it and there is a huge difference. I just shot this wine thing in Italy. Behind the scene guy, I had the Pocket 4K, I had the Pocket 6K. I did use the Pocket 4K for some shot and I could clearly tell that was the Pocket 4K based on the skin tones. And finally, another difference, Pocket 6K, better highlights roll off than the Pocket 4K. The Pocket 4K tends to clip those highlights a little sooner, nothing crazy. Again, fantastic dynamic range. But if you ask me, these are the difference, I put them side by side for many months, <laughs> many times. And this is a question that I've been asked quite a lot from people. Should I go with the 4K? Because maybe the price is a little bit lower or the 6K. I think at this moment, my big suggestion is to go with the Pocket 6K G2. Great highlights roll off, great skin tones, beautiful image really sharp but a nice sharpness and you have the option to put a viewfinder you have the sony batteries and you have the tiltable screen so you don't have to have an external monitor all the time i think is one of the best camera on the market i explained many times already why I'm not a big fan of the pro i'm not a big fan of those nd again guys try yourself rent both go out there shoot with them but now let's just talk about why i would never go back to mft micro four thirds lenses and so on my big problem when I had the Pocket 4K is that at some point in my life I was like, okay, I need to start building a lens set. So I thought about the Voilander, I thought about the Canon FD to use with the Metabones, but there was always this thing that uh, made me think that it was not a good investment for the future. And what do I mean by that? Like micro four third lenses, let's say you wanna start collecting Voilander, other MFT lenses. You can at some point put them on an Ursa. You know, you can't use them on an Alexa. So that thought was limiting me quite a lot. And that's why I never started collecting MFT lenses. So when I had the Pocket 4K, if you remember, I had the Canon FD and I was using them with the Metabon Speed Booster FD to MFT. Now that was awesome. I had the through S35 look, but you're always passing through another lens, through another adapter. And you know, what if there's someone coming up and he has a Leica R and I want to put them on and they're EF. I can't do that without another speed booster. So all this speed booster madness made me think, okay, I need an EF camera and I'm gonna invest in an EF mount lens set. In this case, I invested in my Leica R EF. I can use them on a RED, I can use them on an RLX, I can use them on an Ursa, you know, and when you put an MFT lenses on the pocket, you always have the, the crop factor. I was never a big fan of that sensor size. I think it was too small for me. Uh, I was having a hard time achieving that, that beautiful Boca and shallow depth of field and all this kind of stuff. So again, the FFD on the speed booster were 
absolutely amazing, totally fine. It was a very low cost uh, option because at the time my 24 millimeter was like 100 bucks and my 50 mil was like 60 bucks, something like that. The speed booster was quite expensive and that's why I was like, I really hope that Magic is gonna come out with that EF camera so I can finally start collecting my EF lenses. So this is one of the things that made me switch to the Pocket 6K and I didn't even think about it once it came out. I was like, okay, here, and I switched to the Pocket 6K. Again, guys, I talk about all of these camera gear, breakdown cinematography in my 10 hour course at batteryacademy.com. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you jump as well from a 4K to the 6K and why. I uh, would love to read them and uh, have a good one and I'll see you the next one.